Hey, how's it going friends? It's your girl Ash Coyote and today we are doing something that is incredibly different, incredibly different for my channel. It, it is actually going to be a ton of fun. We're going to be taking a look at the game Grumps Furry History and by the game Grumps Furry History, I mean a total compilation of all the moments that really kind of define whether or not they are actually furries. Now, for those of you who don't know who the Game Grumps are, they're like the OG Let's Players. They're amazing. Go check out their channel after this video. I so love them. They, they've like, they've been a fixture in my life for like the past five years. I, I, I've just watched like everything that they do. And of course, over the years, there's been these moments where they've kind of more or less dropped hints and or just said some stuff that might lead people to believe that, you know, Dan at the very least, and possibly Aaron, is a furry. That's up to you to decide at the end. Um, what I'm going to be doing for this, uh, for this episode, is I'm going to be going through kind of all their stuff uh, compiled together and checking it out and showing all the different moments where, hey, they might be a furry. But before we get started, I want you to drop me a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you think. Do you think Dan and Aaron are furries? I mean, do you? Just this last year, I got to fulfill a life dream. I ended up in a Game Grumps animated. My persona can be seen in the Fursona Shelter episode, and oh my god, that was just so amazing. I, I just, oh, I love moments like those where you get to interact with people that you really look up to. Dan and Aaron really inspired me to do what I do here. They, they were the catalyst for me kind of getting into YouTube more as like a job, more as a career. This is, these are the people that kind of inspired me to do what I'm doing right now. So, you know, like in a lot of ways, this, this video is just as much kind of a fun look at their furry history as it is kind of like a tribute to Dan and Aaron. You guys are amazing. Thank you for being a source of inspiration in my life. And thank you for making such fun content because you know what? Even on the worst days, you can make me smile. And that, that means the world to me. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the meat of the episode. Let's go check out Dan and Aaron's furry history. What is, um, what is the, the, the pebble and the penguin from? Or the penguin and the pebble? Oh, that's just a, that's not a Disney cartoon. Oh, it's just a... That, that was just a childhood classic. Is it its own... Is it a movie? I don't... Yeah, yeah, it is. Oh, okay. I, I don't know who, was in, who, who made it. I don't remember. I want to say it was Bluth, but it's probably not Bluth. Who is Bluth? Don Bluth. I know he, I've heard he, that he, name. He did like Dragon's Lair and oh. he did, uh, the first f American Tale. I love that guy. Yeah. I should have known him. He, he is a classic, and he draws sexy, sexy women. Does he really? Yeah. I guess he does. Yeah. Now that I think about it. Like all the girls in all of his things are super hot, unless they're anthropomorphic. But that's up to interpretation. I I found anthropomorphic characters very hot. I'm sorry. I'm talking gadget, bro. Uh, gadget? Gadget from Rescue Rangers? Oh yeah, that's right. Mm. Yeah, but not that NES version. I oh yeah. She was scurry. There was um, there was a comic. I like. I used to be way into comics when I was a kid but like weird independent comic. So I'm gonna stop for a second and kind of address the first thing, the elephant in the room. So they brought up anthropomorphic characters being sexy, anthropomorphic characters being hot. Now that is kind of a furry thing. I, I mean, like, let, let's be honest here, guys. Furries are notorious for kind of sexy looking animal characters. Now, just because you like Lola Bunny, that does not necessarily make you a furry, but it's definitely heading down that path. It's definitely on its way. It's uh, it's kind of furry adjacent at that point. It's getting close. Um, a lot of furries, uh, myself included, got introduced to the fandom through animation. Animations like Don Bluth. And kind of going along that theme of animation, I mean, a lot of people, you know, they'll credit Disney as making them a furry or, you know, like, who knows? Warner Brothers, maybe maybe Animaniacs, or you know, like Bugs Bunny made somebody a furry. That's totally possible. That's totally plausible. That's a real thing. That actually happens much more frequently than you think. And I, you know, like I think that people often kind of gloss over this fact that honestly, anthropomorphic characters as a whole have been around for a very, very, very long time. I mean, it's not like we just kind of came up with this overnight. No, this is something that's been existed pretty much since we've, we've been around. I mean, you can look at cave art. The earliest cave art out there 
is of anthropomorphic characters. Look at the ancient Egyptians with like Anubis and everything. Look at the beginning of my film where we actually just have that quick little montage of everything where it just describes anthropomorphic characters in a brief history. Yeah, I mean, that is a thing, right? Um, so let's kind of, let's kind of continue. Let's kind of like pick up. You're talking about Hepcats? Yeah, yeah, yeah d that's that's cool that you knew where I was gonna go. I did show you that. Yeah, well, you let me borrow them, and I still haven't read them. Okay. And I the, feel bad. No, don't. I mean, the story was never finished, so it's more for just the enjoyment of the art. But um, uh, there was a like a really off the beaten path uh, indie comic called Hepcat. Okay, so first off, um, indie comics, indie comics in general. So furries kind of spawn from the indie comic scene. Diego, outside. Go. Now, this is a bit of a coincidental occurrence as far as Dan goes, because really kind of the 70s and 80s, zine culture exploded, indie comics exploded. It was kind of like the internet before the internet, um, and a lot of people latched onto them. And of course, the earliest furries latched onto them, ending up in a lot of furry publications. Publications like Hepcats, for example. While not necessarily overtly furry, though I think their creator was the furry, so those characters were defined as uh, funny animal characters. So uh, funny animal comics kind of literally birthed in the 80s. You know, it was it was a genre that just kind of exploded. I mean, like, look at like Fritz the Cat, for example. That was a huge, huge piece back then. Or you can look at like Omaha the Cat Dancer, which I'm sure Dan has read. If you haven't read that, Dan, I think I got a piece of material for you. You better go check it out. Uh, trust me, going off a film about furry history, one of the things that you have to get used to is, you know, going through these archives of old comics and zines and just seeing how much art was out there. In the late 80s, early 90s, with just like, I love the art style so much, and it got me into like anthropomorphic uh, animal comics. Albedo was another good one. Um, Albedo? Yeah. Or Albedo? I don't know how you'd say it. But that's like these little. Uh, I don't know, mice or squirrel creatures in space. Uh -huh. and they're just, they're kind of person-like. They're awesome. I love that shit. There's one called Tall Tales, which was like a Dungeons and Dragons one with animals. I'm nerdy for that shit. Can't help it. Okay, Albedo. Uh, so Albedo is a furry comic. Steve Galachi is often thought of as one of the grandfathers of the furry fandom. Albedo was literally a furry comic. This guy went to furry cons. This guy was at Confuzzled, and you know, like the very first furry con, right? Like this guy has been around forever. He has been guest of honor at a few cons. He was guest of honor at like Anthrocon when I was making the film. Sadly, I didn't get a chance to interview him because I think he is amazing. Albedo was a comic that I read. Um, yeah, that, that actually definitely sets you up for being a furry. Dan, if you read Albedo, you might be a furry, buddy. You might be a furry. That's one point for Dan being a furry. Here we go, here we go, here She's we go sexy now. legs. All right. You know what I mean? Is this like the day that Dan became a furry? No, I mean, just, all right. She looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm actually, just, I, th I think that beak looks really good on her. I'm just saying, fucking look at her legs. <laughs> And then look at her Compared huge, disgusting, ch everything chicken else. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so Dan understands fursuit problems. That's definitely a problem with fursuits. Big head. Everything else. It's it's so funny how like weird, like, you know, I don't know, like mascots and fursuits and everything are, especially to folks outside of the fandom. I know like one big thing that like a lot of people see is they're like, oh my God, you don't like furries. Everybody has a fursuit, right? Mm -mm. Not everybody has one. They're actually kind of uncomfortable to wear. There's a reason why I am not wearing them in long videos because oh my God, they get so freaking hot. It's like wearing a giant carpet. I mean, it's just a chance to like embody your character really. That's what fursuits are. But I am so glad Dan, Dan understands fursuit problems. He's put some thought into this. This is actually kind of funny. So Dan, I think this might be point number two. You understand fursuit problems. You might be a furry. <laughs>
I, uh, when I was younger, before puberty, mm -hmm. I had daydreams about, like, skipping along, holding hands with, like, the girl Care Bears. Oh, yeah. That's so, like, that's like furries before they were furries. Yeah, that was my... Pretty good. That was my... I like dogs with antlers. Is that, like, a thing? Yeah. Oh, In my that. room. With my drawings. Oh, okay, Dan. Um, if you're drawing pictures of dogs with antlers in your room, <laughs> you're probably a furry there. That, that's that's definitely another point for Dan possibly being a furry. Um, sparkle dogs, anyone? I mean, I, I'm just, I have this picture of Dan sitting in his room and he's just like, he's, he's, he's peacefully sketching this, this sparkle dog with antlers and like super derpy eyes and like, ah. Uh, He's he's a deer bro, yeah, like a like a like a persona kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Like oh, he's a deer bro. Hold on, they know what a persona is. That's 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 clear, precise for your knowledge. I mean, do, do normies know what personas are? I, I I feel like knowing what a persona is is kind of like you've experienced part of the fandom. You know something about the fandom. He's no, a, I just meant he's a like like he drives John Deere tractors. Oh, I see. Yeah, he's a deer bro. <laughs> like he's a fucking like otherkin, like a deer otherkin. That's that's pretty furry. If you know otherkin, that's pretty furry. Do you actually believe you're a dog, or do you just like dogs so much that you're like I'm a dog? I have no idea, dude. All right, I'm gonna I, I gotta do some research. Gotta do some research. Yeah. Pause the episode. <laughs> <laughs> Really? <laughs> so Dan, Dan's just like furiously typing into Google. He's like, other kin. I think I might be another kin. And suddenly this is like Dan just like, Dan's furry awakening. Right here. It's happening. He's just like, boom. Here we go. I've been a human a long time. Yeah, fuck it. I'd rather be a fucking, I'd rather be a fucking unicorn. Yeah. Oh my God. And then you could have sex with a human girl and you could be like, oh God, I don't normally date out of my species. But... <laughs> You're just so special, I figured it was worth it. <laughs> like, what would you, what would you be? What would be your animal? I think you said it. I think I'd be a unicorn. unicorn. Yeah. 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 All right. Or, or, or like, like if, as far as real animals, probably like a, like a dolphin or a deer. A dolphin? Why a dolphin? They're, they're nice. They're, they're intelligent and they're sweet. Aren't they very sexually aggressive? Well, some, <laughs> <laughs> apparently. I don't know. All right. Like I'll, if, I'll, if you see a dolphin, it's either I'll just like, go with deer then. I'll go with deer. It's either like gonna be your friend or it's gonna be like your assaulter. Yeah. Yeah. It's gotcha. gonna be like problems for you in the future for like years to come. All right, we'll go with with big horned elf. Good God. Okay. Now they're creating their fursonas. I mean, need I say more? Um, yeah. Gave me a, a comic a long time ago that I haven't read yet, and I feel bad. Uh, well, the, no need to feel bad because I don't remember. It was the I still have it. What is it? It was um Oh, that's not good. It was a, it was a comic about animals. Oh, we three? No. Oh. I love the dad just has like virtually every anthro comic out there. Period. Like, I mean, Dan obviously has a very large collection of indie comics featuring anthro characters. Just throwing that out there. I mean, it just, it seems like this is definitely more than an interest for him. It's definitely something that's kind of like crossed that level where he might actually be a IRL furry. Uh, it was a comic about, it's it like Beast something, was it? Beast? Animal something? fuck was it called? Um... It was like anthropomorphic people. They were people, but they were animals. Hepcats? No, it was. It's called Beasters! It's called Beasters. It means you are sexually aroused by... Oh. Yeah. Oh. Well... I'm gonna take aim at the evil. <laughs> <laughs> is that... Is that, uh... What are you thinking? Well, it's just that I wouldn't seek it out, but like... <laughs> if it appeared before me and... Well, I mean, Jesus, like, if, if you've got two animals, mm -hmm. and they're not animals, they're 
people. They're people with animal heads or whatever. Like, yeah. but they have people bodies. Well, they they have mostly people bodies. They usually still have like paws and they're, yeah, and they're yeah, covered in like fur. Certain animal qualities. Tails. Yeah. But I mean, they're they're meant to be animal people for the right. most part. Um, and if they're fucking with their human <laughs> genitalia, <laughs> well, no. Typically, they also have like dog penises. And oh, stuff. really? Yeah. That doesn't do anything for me. I mean, so I guess I guess there is a lot of furry porn that has like very human penises. Yeah, yeah it, it just doesn't it doesn't seem that different than normal porn to me, I guess is what I'm saying. Okay. But like would I ever dress up in a costume and and have sex with someone else in an animal costume? Probably. Mm. I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> Princess Sally. It's right Sally. There. Yeah. Princess. She's uh I don't want to hear any of that Dan f uh confirmed as furry shit either. That's that's hot. No matter what I don't care if you're in it. That's just hot. <laughs> I just want to open some like furry art. And you're just like, look, I don't want you saying it. yeah. it's just like a furry, like jacking off another furry. Yeah. I don't want to just dance his furry shit, but yeah. look at this. Yeah, come on. I don't care who you are. That's hot. Mm. Okay, Dan, if you like cartoon animals like that, you might be a furry. Just, just. That, that's definitely a point to furry. I don't know how many points we're up to now. Hey, Dan, confirmed as furry. I don't. I don't like cartoon animals. What is like? Okay, what? I liked it so, so much earlier than it was ever called furry stuff. I just thought anthropomorphic animals were cute. Oh yeah. Uh, and and now, because someone else decided to have a fetish, now I'm the weirdo. <laughs> furry is not a fetish. Um, it really isn't. I know that's a common misconception about the fandom, especially to folks who don't really have any experience with it. They might have just seen some weird thing that, you know, like they saw here on YouTube. I mean, there's plenty of people here on YouTube that make up shit. And I mean, that doesn't necessarily make it true. I mean, you can go fact check all this stuff if you want. I, I used to have a crush on girls with glasses. That's why um, Jeanette was my favorite chipmunk. <laughs> She is the cutest. She was also the tall one, so I was like, she's the one. Who yes, I, she's, yes, she's yeah. the nerdy one. Yeah, she's the oh, one. Oh, she's up. so cute. I mean, that's pretty furry, Dan. That's pretty furry. That's about a, that's, that's really furry. You have crushes on these characters. Come on. Yeah. Well, actually, I don't really get it. Like, I, I mean, I get like, oh, an anthropomorphic character is sexy. I get that. I'm, right. I don't think he's sexy personally. I, I just think he's kind of doofy. Have, has there ever been an anthropomorphic character that you wanted to have sex with? Um, Ratchet. Was that her name? From Ratchet and Clank? No, from... <laughs> I mean, I can see why you would say that. <laughs> but, uh, no. Is that her name? From, uh, uh, Chip and Dale. Oh, the cute chipmunk girl. Yeah. yeah like the I little... Think, I think her name is Ratchet. The little gizmo genius? Yeah. Yeah, she was oh, cute. Oh, my God. She fucking... She did it for me when I was, like... Six. <laughs> Teen. <laughs> she definitely plus ten. <laughs> plus four. She definitely um Hey. We're we're just gonna do a smash cut list of all in Aaron and Dan's furry crushes. Anthropomorphic animals were cute. Oh yeah. I, I used to have a crush on girls with glasses. Ratchet. Was that her name? From Ratchet and Clank? No, from <laughs> So first off, I think her name was actually Gadget, not Ratchet, um, but I could be wrong. And second, yeah, you know, like that, that definitely is a big point towards furry there, Aaron. Um, I like animal characters because it, it says, the, the animal they choose to represent each character s says so much about who they are personality-wise without ever having to say anything, you know? Okay, so Dan, you just literally hit on one of the key parts of being a furry. So when we're picking our animals, when we're picking our personas, we're actually applying different elements of ourselves into those characters. And I mean, that is really possibly the most telling, possibly the most damning evidence you might actually be a furry here, buddy. Hey, my character is a coyote. Why is it a coyote? Because I, I don't know, I'm a fucking weirdo. That's why. Um, um, honestly, I mean, like I picked coyote because, you know, like coyotes are kind of a little, you know, like weather. They're a little worn. They're, you know, wisest to the world. You know, like the sage coyote, they've been around. They're scruffy and, you know, they're also kind of outcasts and loners and stuff. And I mean, that's kind of been a lot of me my whole life. So what, from what I understand, furries, it's a community and it's nice. 
Okay. I guess the I guess the the, 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 the media has portrayed them in, as deviants. I'm and pretty, that's, and that's not cool. It was just funny how like, um, clearly it's something like people like to tease each other about. Because the, it wasn't saying like, oh, Dan's a furry. It was like, Dan's a furry. You know that <laughs> yeah. kind of tone. Yeah. But uh, I don't care, man. I've been called a lot worse. So I will say this: the community has changed a lot over the years. Like nowadays, you know, like it's a bunch of young kids kind of having wild parties and a lot of fun. And you know, like we we throw on these fur suits and we just we have a blast. You know, like we have like raves, we have like art jams, we get to hang out, you know, like we, we have like these epic parties and I don't know, it's just, it's an awesome kind of fun thing to do on the weekends, you know? I mean, that's that's just kind of what we do. It's it's, it's enjoyable, you know, it's, it's a part of our lives. It's like an awesome vacation with all your best friends from around the world that you just get to get to do almost every month or used to before the Backstreet Boys reunion. I, that is a thought I've had. It's like, we are um, conditioned at a very young age to find animal characters sexy. Because, like, I was rewatching fucking Lola Bunny from Space Jam. Dude, she's like, <laughs> she's all like bent over, picking up the basketball, <laughs> looking back at you. I'm like, come on. Yeah. That And Minerva Mink from fucking Animaniacs. Obviously, Dan, you know these characters. You know who these characters are. You have followed these characters. These are characters that you have had an interest in. And you know what? Yeah, that's uh, that that's pretty that's pretty furry. Um, it doesn't necessarily make you a furry, but that's pretty furry. I like all right, person who knows all those characters by full name. Dude, I was in love with them when I was a kid. <laughs> they were the hottest. Oh my god! Yes! Oh my god! Yes! All right. Yes! It's on. Never have there been two people more excited to create their fursona. Never have there been two people more excited to create their fursonas. Wait, so the man can be naked, but the girl has to have underwear on? Is the man naked? Yeah, he's got no clothes on. But Maybe the girl has to have a little, like, whatever that is. Jumpsuit. A little spandex bodysuit. Yeah. Dope, dude. Yeah, Well, great. I'm gonna be a girl. I'm into- Oh. Oh, man. Dog, wolf, rabbit. Whoa, bear, I love it. Cat. Bird. Or hedgehog. Oh my god, Aaron. <laughs> what, are, what are you gonna do? Whoa, I have abilities and shit? Hold on a sec. Okay. Hey. They're creating their personas. <laughs> is, that, is that acceptable cat to is say? a delight to look <laughs> at. Damn. Soon. Alright, we'll go cat. Alright, sweet. Oh, I can be a different kinds of cats. A di <laughs> I could be a different kinds of cats. Yeah. Great. I got the cats with the big ears, the small ears, or the droopy ears. Yeah, pick. pick. I feel like I should be the big ears, yeah, right? Yeah, it's, that's, yeah. that's the cutest. Whoa, oh, dude. Look at all the palettes. I love how excited Dan is in this clip. He's genuinely excited. He's like, oh, you know, like, I get to design a character. It's this cute little furry girl. Oh my god, this is gonna be so fun, you know? It, it's just, it's amazing. That's, that's kind of the fun part about this, is, you know, like, you just gotta, you just gotta do what you like. God. Make it as hideous as possible. No! Well. How about... Like, like sea foam green. Uh huh. Wait, hold like on. A, like a cool mint. What's like the? Oh, they're making a sparkle dog. No. Dumbest. Like, like he's got jaundice. There we go. Right, it just looks yellow. Whoa, eye types. No, this is dope. Whoa. Hey, furry confirmed stamp. Right there, confirmed. Mister, Mister Till into this. Yeah. Well, I mean, shit. Like we were. Aaron was showing me the top ten hottest. Uh, Women from Sonic Countdown. It was one of the greatest things I've ever seen in my life. No, it's hottest Sonic female. Hottest Sam. Sonic females. Top ten hottest Sonic females. Really? Did you have a favorite? What? Uh, of Sonic's females? Don't say females. Say women, please. <laughs> I mean, you know it. I mean, just say it, Aaron. No, I just, you know, it's not bunny. Oh, bunny. Bunny, absolutely bunny. Yeah. I'm a Sally Acorn man myself. Sally Acorn? <laughs> She's beautiful. What's her character, Dan? I don't know. Who fucking cares? She's like a hamster or something? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> oh, shit. What is she? Well, she'd be a squirrel, right? Because they're the ones that love acorns. Oh, yeah. Just like I appreciate the shape of a good raccoon woman. Or some other furry thing that everyone's 
<laughs> made up their minds that I'm way into. Man, you really, uh, really I, haven't gotten over that, have you? No, no, I've decided to lean into it hard. Oh, okay. That's probably for the better. <laughs> it, it, well, because, I mean, like, people aren't going to stop at either way, so I'm like, it's kind of funny for me, too. I mean, dude, that's totally fine. Like, you could totally lean into it pretty hard, but I mean, the evidence is definitely pointing in that direction. Just saying. It is pretty hilarious. Yeah. The whole Dan's a furry meme. If you know what, I mean, there's so many worse things I've been called in my life. Well, like, technically, you are based on what people have been emailing me. Sure, why not? Who it's cares? Like if you just appreciate anthropomorphic. Did I fuck this up? I know I said this in an episode last time. Remember in Space Jam when Lola Bunny is like bent over and picking up the ball and she like looks back at the camera? Mm -hmm. Like, give me a fucking break. Like, we weren't all conditioned to find this stuff hot. As kids. Yeah. No, it's true. And well, I, I just, we, we were just talking about that the other day, because we were watching Minerva Mink footage. Yes! And... Her it, boobs take up, like, half the screen. Yeah. Oh my god, guys. You've been looking at Minerva Mink footage? Um, that's, like, the most furry thing that you could ever do. I mean, you're just like, you're just like, oh my god, Minerva Mink. Whoa, she's so hot. Yeah, that's, that's, that's super furry. And then, and then... A comment was made about how like it's th this shit didn't exist before the '80s. I don't think I don't think furries existed before the '80s. If I'm being honest. What anthropomorphic animals? You mean? Well, no, I mean like a like for them. Oh. Either. Okay, the the sexual furry part. Yeah. I don't think that existed. There there was definitely there was definitely like sexy animal stuff before that though, like in cartoons. Yes, uh, the furries. So, furry is a term definitely came about in the 80s. That's that's not for debate. Um, however, I would say that there have been quote unquote sexy furries around for a lot longer. There's plenty of evidence for that. There's plenty of things out there that kind of illustrate that. I mean, like just take one look at like Omaha the Cat Dancer, right? Someone was telling me about like Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, which I've never watched before, but like someone was telling me song. that like. Uh, there's a joke in there about, like, how she's watching Robin Hood, like the Disney Robin Hood from the 70s with the fox. And she's like, do you remember the Robin Hood where you're watching it and you just feel all warm and different? <laughs> and, like, we, there were, like, three girls in, in our office who were like, oh, hell yeah, that Robin Hood was hot. Yeah, oh, and I yeah. I was like, oh, thank God, it worked both ways. Oh, that made Marion, though. Ugh. I don't remember. I'm just going to look up Robin Hood made Marion Disney. Let me just get a quick picture of her so I could see. Oh, I mean, you gotta watch the movie. It's the way she moves and talks. And well, you know what? First of all, take a cold shower. <laughs> Second of all, I'm looking at these pictures and I absolutely would. Oh, oh, dude. I mean, come on. <laughs> She's fucking awesome. Uh, okay. Hold, hold that thought. We'll get back to it next time on Game Rooms. She kind of kicks a little ass, too. Oh, I in love in that. In a, in a oh. oh, God. Why are we, uh, why are we starting a new episode of Game Room, Sarah, uh, Dan? Huh? Um, taking that phone somewhere? Yeah. I mean, everybody has a crush on Maid Marian. She's so cute. She's so sweet. She's amazing. She's a badass. I mean, like, that's the coolest part of the character. Talk about more furry shit. I uh, love that in, in an episode. animal woman. <laughs> like squirrels and just walk around LA communicating with each other like that. <laughs> You want to do a man on the street bit where we just dress a squirrel? Oh my god. Around. Or not even, just just like one of us is sitting at a cafe in a squirrel costume and there's like lots of people just kind of wondering like, what's his deal? And then I come in also in a squirrel costume and sit across from you and then we're just like... <laughs> hey, I'd pay to see that. That'd be freaking hilarious. <laughs> And then the waiter comes over and he's like, uh, can I get you guys anything? And we're like, at the same time, like, NUTS! <laughs> <laughs> we're just like, no thanks. Yeah. <laughs> A chamomile tea, please. Yeah, coffee. <laughs> If you're here, who's directing the episode? Oh no! Well then, 
the plot thickens. Act like a dog until your next turn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I have to do so while getting water on the knee. Operation! You're doing an actual operation? Act like a dog. Woof. <laughs> That's awkward. <laughs> Don't half heart this. <laughs> Pant for me. <laughs> yeah! Oh, shit! Wagging my tail. Damn. Well, What's that? A real dog would have eaten that bone. Yeah, the dog would have eaten it. <laughs> <laughs> Wagging my tail. Damn. Well, you... Wagging my tail. Damn. Well, you... Wow, you can't take an animal persona without being a furry is Rachel's justification. But it's just a name. It's like... Well, Batman dresses like a bat. Okay, okay, I, I, I follow. That woman turned me into a furry. Someone mm -hmm. actually explained to me there are furries that use actual, like, dead carcasses. Like Ew, pelts. Ew, really? Yeah. Ew. Why? It's like body horror furries. Is no. it? Is body like a... horror furries? Yeah. No. Hey, unless you're fucking Kira the Wolf. No! What the fuck? We, we don't wear dead animal carcasses, that's gross. Alright. You yeah. Don't care. You wear whatever you want. I'm not into drag, Aaron. I'm a furry. <laughs> it's different. <Way> different. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yes, but uh, if you want to get me three bras for all of my wolf nipples, <laughs> 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 that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't even get that one out. <laughs> Uh, I've got an entire litter to feed. Who, <laughs> <laughs> oh. baby? That's hot. I don't care who you are. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Fucking wolf nipples. Dude. Damn, buddy. Uh, wolf nipples. <laughs> that's that's that just speaks for itself at this point. Um, wow. We've, we've taken it to that level. We just took a look at all this footage, and I mean, I gotta say, I mean, the evidence is pretty clear, at least in my mind. I mean, there's definitely some sort of like thing going on there, whether it be furry adjacent, maybe they're just fans of anthropomorphic animals, or maybe they are indeed full-blown furries. I don't know. At the end of the day, that's up to them. And I think that's part of the fun of this anyways. And like the thing that I would stress kind of going forward with this is that, you know, like this, this is never really about kind of like trying to pick and choose and define oneself so much as just finding people that enjoy the same thing you do. I mean, that's, that's it. That's it at the end of the day. Um, so, you know, like I would just say this, um, you know, like Dan, Aaron, if you do ever end up watching this or anybody else who's watching this and might think that they're a furry, well, like it's not the worst thing in the world. It's not bad, honestly. Um, it's a lot of fun most of the time. Um, there, there's definitely some times where it's not, but it's, it's really, you know, like it's a really vibrant, unique community and it's a, it's very special in this world. And I think that, you know, a lot of people could benefit from experiencing some of the stuff that we have in the fandom. And I mean, I think y'all would too. So just throwing that out there. Um, if you want to learn more about furries, if you want to uh, learn more about what the fandom's about, uh, please, you can go check out my documentary. Uh, it's called The Fandom. It's on my channel here. Um, or you can check out umpteen other resources that are available on the internet. There's plenty of them. Trust me. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Uh, I want to hear what you all think of this style of episode from me. Drop me a comment in the comment section below. Let me know, you know, like what, what your thoughts are on this. Did you really enjoy it? Did you hate it? Is it too long? Is it too tedious? I don't know. You know, I, I, I just want to hear from you. Also, before you go, if you'd like to help support me um, and, you know, like help me make more content like this, please consider supporting my page. Just $1 a month does more for me than pretty much all my ads here on YouTube. I mean, like that's, that's kind of the crux of it is, you know, like creating this content takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, and it does take money. So I, you know, like I can always use a little bit of help. If you like what I do, you know, throw it, throw it down. Say, you know, like say, hey, I support Ash. Um, anyways, I hope you all have a fabulous day. Goodbye.